and the um, participants of the delegates, the comrades, the uh, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of this plenary session is the development of trans region corridors of the global economy. And as I already said in my introduction, it deals directly with our railway industry. First of all, I would like to underline what was already said many times by myself in different places, because we are oriented at cooperation with all the railways of this 1520 area. We proved with our work that the common transport area is a priority task for us. This action and the last achievements in the international activity can prove it, but we also deal with our colleagues and partners, and we are sure that the well developed and efficient railway system is a basic for the further development. Those integration process we're talking about is the reality within the development of the international economic cooperation. Some one may speak about the globalization of the global of the economy, but however the world, thanks to the communication and the railway transport is one of the communication means, becomes even closer. We're talking now very seriously about the development of our, one of our project means Trans-Siberian Railway in seven days, and we already discussed this issue with the Minister of Transport of the Russian Federation, because if we manage to deliver the freight with such a, such a speed from Asia to Europe, we'll also increase the competitiveness of the railway transport. I would like to underline it once again. We also discussed that the Commission of Transport who attended by three ministers of transport of the Russian Federation, we underlined that we didn't want any exclusive conditions for our development. We just wanted actually these common conditions for competition. We will also discuss it more detailed at the round tables. And I would like to point you at this aspect, the equal competition conditions. Uh, till the uh, 2030, the total investment development of the global transport infrastructure amounts to $11 trillion, including the aviation railway system and the pipelines, $11 trillion in total for the whole world. And 44% of this amount of money about Five trillion dollars. I intended to invest into the railway infrastructure. So the Renaissance we are hearing from the United States, from the Europe. I mean, the Renaissance of the railway has a very solid development in terms of investments into the railway infrastructure. The first objectives that we are facing now are presented on this slide. I apologize that this slide is in Russian, but I would like to tell you some of these objectives. Yes, the implementation of this investment project requires to increase the management level for the uh, international transport corridors. From our side, it also requires also a great focus on the European policy. The European Commission adopted the White Book of Transport 2050 for, that foresees that more than 50 percent of the up to 300 kilometer transport will be done by the railway and water transport. That's the 10T program. 
will is implement, being implemented now. We are currently working on a new Eurasian transport corridor. The, you are well informed about it. This is actually international railway cooperation for the freight transport from China via Kazakhstan, Russia, Belarus to Europe. We will also talk more about it at different roundtables. Second, one of the serious barriers is the development of the so-called technical standards. Also, when doing our meetings with Mr. Carlson, with the ministers of European countries, with the ministers of the Baltic states, we talked a lot about it. We are not able to achieve the full unity in standards, but as for the synchronization, harmonization of the legal frameworks and standards could be possible, and actually what we need to do now. The prioritized areas of cooperation between RZT and International UIC, and Mr. Lebelo is also here. This is actually the balanced position in you know, order to achieve the balance in the development of the transport corridors and the development of the interoperability of the infrastructure and the railway fleet between the different standard railways, the development of very high speed transport, and the, so we achieved a very significant progress with, together with the French railway and Deutsche Bahn. We can also uh, unify the coding of our friends. We can also in, uh, introduce and implement the new information and satellite technologies and also reduce the environmental impact because you already know that the railway transport is actually the most environmental friendly among all the transport means. And we also appreciate our cooperation within the IUC. And we'll keep developing this cooperation in the future. And we also think that the third important objective is direct on the line in a special way. That's actually what we need to eliminate information barriers. I do remember how long it how much time it took place to work with our Finnish colleagues to achieve the, the electronic declaration of freights transported by the railway. And I can't tell you right now that we achieved here a great success, even but in other directions for freight transport to Europe. This is the task or objective number one, the electronic declaration of freights transported. The development of this scientific and technical cooperation between the CIS countries and the European companies and the APEC countries. Within the UIC, we are working on it, but we can certainly intensify this work because we have really significant achievements in Europe in the area of airway, we, as the Russian colleagues, can also present something. And we'll also we'll discuss it at different round tables today and tomorrow. Yesterday, when we were visiting different railway facilities, we were talking about this construction of a new railway station. Mr. Carlos was in doing this visit. And it is quite important that we are implementing the policy of energy efficiency, of the environmental protection. The whole roof of this new railway station will be a solar battery that will also allow to save a lot of energy and reduce emissions. One of the biggest problems we're not able to solve by ourselves, and we can only rely on the governmental support, this actually the cooperation between uh, the customs authorities of different countries. We are facing this problem even within the CIS area. It's talking not about passenger transport, but also about the freight transport. 
when the IIT area is well developed now, we can ask our own ministers to solve this problem of electronic declarations, and we can also decrease the number of customs procedures when crossing the border. It will also increase our competitiveness in the market. I would like to underline that on the 8th of June, we will open the new the ferry line in Zasnitz and Mr. Minister. We will also use these offers in order to reduce the customs and border procedures. Quite an important step was signed between the AZT and Kazakhstan Railway to develop the uh, transport logistic system of the common economic space, and it is also one of the priorities for us. Please, next slide. When talking about the balanced development of the network, I think that together with our partners from Europe and the Baltic states, we can balance the development of the infrastructure. It would be quite strange if we invest money, also our governmental money, into the development of the infrastructure, which is not, will be continued by the development of the infrastructure in our neighbor countries, I mean, the, in the sales countries. The same can be applied to the European countries. I think we can agree that we can synchronize this work and do it regularly. We also developed the uh, general scheme of the railway development till 2020, and we can share all the information available. One of the most important elements is to increase the quality of passenger transport, especially on the international routes. And I also think we can also resolve this issue very fast. This slide tells you about the financing sources that are already well known in the Western youth. We are currently working, working on it. You know our office for using the money from the Russian pension funds that will also allow us to develop the infrastructure. We are clear that we need to be ahead in the infrastructure development, so the infra railway infrastructure development should be ahead of the development of the Russian economy. This is actually what you can find even in the uh, student's book at the university. In my introduction, I was talking about the importance of the development of the human potential. Here, we have good cooperation with the Deutsche Bank, with the French railway, with the Siemens company. And I'm absolutely happy as the head of the UIC, even with our colleagues from CIS, we keep developing this topic because we educate the students, the students from the CIS countries in Russia. But when taking into account the international development, we can also think about such a student's exchange between the Russian railway colleges and universities and the colleges and universities from the neighboring countries. It wouldn't be uh, just a futurism if I forecast and within the next 10 years we're going to take part not only in the renaissance of the railway, we will see the absolutely new uh, transport systems, absolutely new transit transport corridors, and they will integrate the European economy, the Russian economy, and the economies from APEC. We are not able to talk now about the integration of Russia and Europe. This is a political issue, but the rail transport is, is ready for such an integration, and we are able to solve the political issues that can be said by and the European Union, by the European Parliament, by different countries, we are ready for it. And thank you for your attention.